सो हमने लास्ट क्लास में स्पेरिकल मिरर्स के बारे में डिस्कशन करा था इफ़ यू रिमेंबर दैट स्पेरिकल मिरर के बारे में हमारे पास दो मिरर आए थे एक कॉन्केव एंड दूसरा कॉन्वेक्स इस क्लास के अंदर हम इन दोनों मिरर्स के रे डायग्राम्स के बारे में बात करेंगे रे डायग्राम्स के फॉर्मेशन के बारे में जिसमें हम ऑब्जेक्ट को डिफरेंट डिफरेंट पोजीशंस पे रखेंगे और फिर ऑब्जेक्ट की इमेज देखेंगे इन दोनों मिरर्स के सामने एंड उस इमेज फॉर्मेशन के बारे में उसकी क्वालिटी के बारे में कि वो इमेज कैसी है रियल है इरेक्ट है इन्वर्टेड है वर्चुअल है साइज क्या है इमेज का इस सब के डिस्कशन करेंगे हम इस क्लास के बारे में सो अकॉर्डिंग टू एन सी आर टी एंड मैनी अदर रेफरेंस बुक्स फॉर ट्रेसिंग एन इमेज फॉर्म बाय कॉन्केव मिरर देर आर फोर रूल्स फोर रूल्स जो कि एन सी आर टी भी बताती हैं हमें बाकी रेफरेंस बुक भी बताती हैं बट मुझे वो फोर के फोर रूल्स में कुछ खास दिखता नहीं है क्योंकि मेरे हिसाब से वो चारों रूल एक ही काम कर रहे हैं वो एक काम जो हम पिछली दो क्लासेस से कर रहे हैं हम लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन पर डील कर रहे हैं तो जब भी एक लाइट किसी भी रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस से रिफ्लेक्ट होती है तो वो लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो करती है चाहे फिर वो प्लेन मिरर से रिफ्लेक्ट करे कॉन्केव मिरर से रिफ्लेक्ट करे कॉन्वेक्स मिरर से रिफ्लेक्ट करे वो हमेशा लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो करती है तो ये चार रूल्स जो मैं अभी आपको बताने वाला हूँ ये चार रूल्स हम लर्न करेंगे ताकि हम ईजिली ट्रेस कर सकें कॉन्केव मिरर के इमेज फॉर्मेशन को बट कॉन्केव मिरर से इमेज फॉर्मेशन को बट जब आप ये चारों रूल्स देख लेंगे तो इवेंचुअली आप देखेंगे कि ये चारों रूल्स कुछ भी नहीं कर रहे हैं सिर्फ और सिर्फ लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो कर रहे हैं एंड जिनमें से फोर्थ रूल तो जो है रूल नंबर फोर जो है वो तो क्लियरली लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन मतलब इवन अ ब्लाइंड मैन कैन सी दैट इट्स अ लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन तो वो बड़ी मजाक की बात हो गई कि आप लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को ही चार अलग तरीके से दिखा रहे हैं और चारों में बोल रहे हैं कि अलग अलग रूल है जबकि ये कोई खास रूल नहीं है लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो करने के बाद बस कुछ यूनिक रिजल्ट्स मिलते हैं आपको तो चलिए स्टार्टिंग फॉर ट्रेसिंग इमेज फ्रॉम फॉर्म बाय कॉन्केव मिरर रूल नंबर वन If a ray of light, in fact, rule number one is nothing but a definition of principal focus. So, if a ray of light falls on concave mirror, parallel to principal axis then after reflection it passes from principal focus so let's see how this happens let there be a concave mirror now there's a trick for all the ray diagrams what you need to do is you need to draw it with the help of compass and scale so compass ke andar aap pencil ke sath compass ko aap open kariye with the help of scale of taking at least 4 or 6 cm radius Why four and six? So that its half is clearly two and three. So it's easy to take the half of four and six. So आप यहाँ पर let's say आपने अपना compass का pointer रखा, जिसको आपने center of curvature कहा, और ऐसे एक arc draw करी, और arc draw करते हुए ruling page पे आप ध्यान देंगे अगर, तो मैंने इस point को center of curvature को किसी ruling page की line पे रखा है. इस ruling page की line पे रखने से होता ये है. वही रूलिंग पेज की लाइन मेरे लिए प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस बन जाती है तो बड़ा इजी हो जाता है प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस फिर मुझे बीच में कहीं नहीं बनानी होती रैंडम वो मेरे पेज की रूलिंग पेज 
कि लाइन जो है वो ये एक्ट करती है एज अ प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस एंड अगर आप ध्यान देंगे इन ऑर्डर टू गेट दी सिमिट्री इन ऑर्डर टू गेट द रे डायग्राम वेरी करेक्ट मैंने इस आर को दो लाइंस ऊपर तक रूलिंग पेज के और दो लाइंस नीचे तक खींचा है सो दैट एकदम डायग्राम सिमेट्रिकल रहे और यही काम जो है अब मैंने पहली बार आपको बता दिया है कि कैसे बनाना है रे डायग्राम तो यही काम आप बनाएंगे मैं यहाँ पर वीडियो में फ्री हैंड से बना रहा हूँ सो so, आप जब बनाएंगे लेकिन तब आप कंपस और स्केल वगैरह की हेल्प से बनाएंगे ताकि बड़ा ही सिमेट्रिक डायग्राम बने और आंसर एकदम करेक्ट आए सो दैट इमेज की जो क्वालिटीज़ आने वाली हैं जो मैंने अभी थोड़ी देर पहले डिस्कस करा था वो आपको लर्न ना करनी पड़े वो रे डायग्राम खुद ही आपको बताए कि इमेज की क्या क्वालिटीज़ आएंगी सो so, ये रे डायग्राम मैं बना रहा हूँ रूल वन के लिए जिसमें एक कॉन्केव मिररर है कॉन्केव मिररर जिसकी एक साइड रिफ्लेक्टिंग है प्लेन वाली और दूसरी साइड जो डॉटेड लाइन्स मैंने अभी बनाई हैं वो नॉन रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस है ऑब्जेक्ट हमेशा रिफ्लेक्टिंग सरफेस की तरफ रखा होता है सो so, लेफ्ट में रखा होगा यहाँ पर ऑब्जेक्ट और हमने बोला कि इफ अ रे ऑफ लाइट फॉल्स ऑन कॉन्केव मेर पैरल टू द प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस तो कोई अगर रे ऑफ लाइट आती है अगर ये सी है तो ये एफ है जिसके लिए हमें रिलेशन लास्ट क्लास से पता है दैट फोकल लेंथ जो होता है वो होता है लेंथ बिटवीन पोल एंड फोकस लेंथ बिटवीन पोल एंड फोकस फोकल लेंथ होता है हाफ द रेडियस ऑफ करवेचर एंड रेडियस ऑफ करवेचर क्या होता है डिस्टेंस बिटवीन सी एंड पी सेंटर ऑफ करवेचर एंड पोल ये फोकल लेंथ का रिलेशन है सो so, अगर कोई भी लाइन जो कि पैरल आ रही है प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस के पहली बात तो प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस के लाइन पैरल कब आती है हमें ये भी पता होना चाहिए वेन एवर द सोर्स और एन ऑब्जेक्ट सोर्स विच सेंस द लाइट इज एट इन्फिनिटी वेन एवर द सोर्स इज एट Infinity, it will send light parallel to the principal axis. तो ये parallel light आ रही है अब ये जो parallel light यहाँ पर आई है हमारे rule के accordingly, इसको reflect होकर focus से pass करना है Perfect, आपको rule अगर learn है तो आप बना सकते हैं कि ये after reflection focus से pass करेगी ये arrow incident light का arrow है ये arrow reflected light का arrow है Now, अगर आप देखेंगे तो ये इंसिडेंट रे जो पैरल आ रही थी ये जब यहाँ पर टकराई तो आपके पास एक पॉइंट ऑफ इंसिडेंस आया इस पॉइंट ऑफ इंसिडेंस से आप नॉर्मल बनाएंगे तो किसी भी आर्क का नॉर्मल जो होता है वो उसके टेंजेंट के नॉर्मल होता है तो अगर आप यहाँ पॉइंट ऑफ इंसिडेंस पे थोड़ा ध्यान देंगे तो आपको एक टेंजेंट दिखेगा इस टेंजेंट से जब आप नॉर्मल बनाएंगे तो इट विल पास इट फ्रॉम सेंटर ऑफ कर्वीचर जो नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड के सर्कल चैप्टर में हमने सीखना भी है कि टैंजन से परपेंडिकुलर जो होता है वो सेंटर से पास करता है नाउ ये जो नॉर्मल सेंटर से पास किया है इसके साथ जो एंगल बनाएगा इंसिडेंट रे वही सेम एंगल बनाएगा रिफ्लेक्टेड रे इस नॉर्मल के साथ जिसको हम लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन भी कहते हैं एंगल आई इज इक्व टू एंगल आर तो आप देखेंगे कि ये लाइट जब आई थी तो इंसिडेंट रे रिफ्लेक्ट होने के बाद फोकस से पास करेगी ऐसा कोई इसका इंटेंशन प्री प्लान नहीं होता है कि मुझे फोकस से ही पास करना है ये लाइट आई थी इंसिडेंट की आफ्टर रिफ्लेक्शन ये रिफ्लेक्ट होगी लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो करके तो जिस पॉइंट से गुजरी है उसका नाम पड़ गया प्रिंसिपल फोकस ये हमने लास्ट क्लास में सीखा भी था तो इसने कुछ नहीं किया इसने खाली लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन को फॉलो किया लेट्स रूल नंबर टू सो नाउ रूल नंबर टू स्टेट्स इनवर्स ऑफ रूल नंबर वन नेचर लव सिमेट्री आई ऑलवेज टेल माई स्टूडेंट नेचर लव सिमेट्री तो नेचर ने अगर कहा कि कोई लाइट पैरल आएगी तो फोकस से जाएगी तो नेचर उसका उल्टा भी कहता है दैट इफ अ रे ऑफ लाइट इफ अ रे ऑफ लाइट इंसिडेंट ऑन कॉन्केव मिरर ऑन पासिंग थ्रू प्रिंसिपल फोकस ऑन पासिंग थ्रू प्रिंसिपल फोकस देन आफ्टर रिफ्लेक्शन travels parallel to principal axis 
अगेन कंपस की हेल्प से मैंने एक आर्क बनाया ऐसा आर्क जो कि टू रूल लाइन ऊपर है टू नीचे है आप थ्री ऊपर थ्री नीचे भी बना सकते हैं जिसका एक साइड रिफ्लेक्टिंग है दूसरा साइड नॉन रिफ्लेक्टिंग है आर्क के लिए जहाँ पॉइंट रखा था मैंने वो सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर है उसका जस्ट हाफ मेरा प्रिंसिपल फोकस है एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस रूल इफ एनी लाइट फॉल्स ऑन इंसिडेंट रे फॉल्स ऑन कॉन्केव मिरर पासिंग थ्रू प्रिंसिपल फोकस देन आफ्टर रिफ्लेक्शन इट ट्रेस अ पैरल पार्ट टू प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस ये पोल है ये पोल सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर प्रिंसिपल फोकस ये सब बनाना ना भूलें आप इमेजनरी लाइन प्रिंसिपल एक्सेस के एंड में एरो ना बनाना भूलें मिरर्स के लिए नॉन रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस एंड रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेट को मैंशन करना ना भूलें नाउ अगेन इसमें भी अगर आप देखेंगे तो कुछ नहीं किया इन्होंने खाली लॉ ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन फॉलो किया है ये नॉर्मल है ये एंगल ऑफ इंसिडेंस है एंड ये एंगल ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन है रूल नंबर थ्री ओके सो रूल नंबर थ्री क्या कहता है देखते हैं इट सेज अ रे ऑफ लाइट इंसिडेंट ऑन कॉन्केव मिरर पासिंग थ्रू सेंटर ऑफ कर्वेचर रीट्रेस इट्स पाथ लेट्स सी हाउ दिस हैपन्स एज यू रिमेंबर इफ अ रे ऑफ लाइट फॉल्स नॉर्मल टू द रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस इट विल रीट्रेस इट्स पाथ इट्स एज सिमिलर इज दैट सो अगेन यू नीड टू ड्रॉ अ कॉन्केव मिरर विद नॉन रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस ऑन दिस साइड एंड रिफ्लेक्टिंग सर्फेस ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड there is principal axis on which focus principal focus is here and center of curvature is that part of the compass which you have pointed on the ruling page center of curvature here now if a ray of light passes through a center of curvature like this let's see like this so this will act as incident ray this will act as incident ray so wherever it connects with the spherical mirror it will be known as point of incidence for this point of incidence once you will draw a normal a tangent for this point of incidence once you will draw a tangent you need to form a normal which will definitely pass through center of curvature that makes incident ray and normal ray to coincide on each other incident ray and normal ray to coincide on each other and we know that if two rays coincide on each other then angle between them which is angle of incidence for incident ray and normal ray will be equal to zero will be equal to zero and according to law of reflection angle r needs to be zero now since angle i is equals to angle r according to law of reflection angle i is equals to angle r therefore r also needs to be zero therefore reflected ray reflected ray needs to coincide on normal ray which makes it to comes back in the same path that's how if a ray of light passes through center of curvature it will retrace its path in order to keep the angle i is equals to angle r this is rule number 3 now let's move forward towards rule number 4 so rule number 4 states so rule number four is more of law of reflection directly because if you get to know the statement you can easily pin out that it's simply a law of reflection it states a ray of light 
incident obliquely what is obliquely nothing but an angle whenever sines needs to represent that something is in is at some angle so it replace that word with obliquely so a ray of light incident obliquely towards the pole p of concave mirror of concave mirror is reflected obliquely is reflected obliquely as per law of reflection so this rule number 4 it still clearly states that i am not unique i only follow the law of reflection let's see the diagram for it there is a concave mirror with non reflecting surface on right side and reflecting surface on left side a principal axis it has pole here focus here center of curvature here as i'm saying that these diagrams are only fbds free body diagrams you need to make it with compass scales with pencil so they'll be more symmetric than mine so there's a ray of light which falls on pole making an angle i with making an angle i with principal axis why i'm saying this i because you know that angle of incidence is only between incident ray and normal ray now this ray here it acts as incident ray as it falls on the mirror and principal axis here our principal axis plays a role role of normal ray because any ray from the point of incidence passes from center of curvature any ray from the point of incidence here point of incidence is pole any ray from the point of incidence passes through center of curvature will act as normal therefore which makes the angle between principal axis and incident ray as angle of incidence now you know the law of reflection you know law of reflection states that for incident ray need to be one side of the normal ray and reflected ray need to be on the other side of the normal ray this is angle of reflection which is equal angle i is equals to angle r that's rule number 4 that if a ray makes an angle with the principal axis incident on pole will reflect back from the pole making the same angle with the principal axis simply nothing but a law of reflection these were the four rules first if a ray passes parallel to the principal axis after reflection goes from principal focus second if a ray comes from the focus incident on the mirror then after reflection goes parallel to the principal axis third if a ray falls on concave mirror passing through center of curvature then after reflection it will retrace its path fourth that any ray falls on pole making an, an an angle with principal axis will reflect back making the same angle from the principal axis these are the four rules we will use only two at a time as if you remember that for making any kind of image for making any kind of image we require only two rays two reflected rays wherever those two reflected rays will meet infinite rays will meet at the same point so we are only here for the position of the image for the rest of the cases which i'm just about to mention you so we will use only two rays from these four rules we will use only two rules at a time so let's see there are six cases for concave mirror the very first case is when object is at infinity when object is at infinity so if you'll see here from this diagram let me tell you there are six cases how there are six cases first you don't know where the object is that is infinity second you know that object is somewhere nearby to the mirror but 
beyond center of curvature that will be your second case third object is at center of curvature fourth object is in between center of curvature and focus fifth object is at focus and sixth object is in between pole and focus so there are six cases we are talking about first case right now when object is at infinity so here's a mirror concave mirror which got non reflecting surface here principal axis center of curvature focus and we know that any object which is at infinity since parallel rays since parallel rays then after reflection they will meet at focus they will meet at focus these are the incident rays this is the reflected ray then after reflection they will meet at focus now we will conclude about four things of the image so here image formed is the very first part is the position of the image so image formed is at principal focus f second part that is what is the nature of an image if you can see that after reflection rays actually meet and form an image so when ray actually meet so wherever they meet we put screen over there that means image is real that means image is real why real because reflected ray actually meet to form an image and when they actually meet to form an image real because they are real and you can see that if object is upside so rays are coming from here right you can see clearly here rays are coming from here that means object is somewhere upside somewhere upside but the image you can see here is downside that means it may it makes an image inverted it makes an image inverted and c part what is the size of the image what is the size of the image so as you don't know where the object is and where these rays coming from so you can clearly see that object must be at the maximum size the infinite size with comparison to that image is only this much therefore image is highly diminished here in physics highly whenever we use the term highly means infinitely highly means infinitely and diminished means small diminished means small so image is infinitely small with respect to object so case 1 was when object was at infinity case 2 when object when object is beyond c so in this case i will show you that even if you don't take two rays if you'll take three rays four rays it will meet at the same point you can't take for one ray only because one ray will not be able to define the position of the image for that you need at least two rays but more than two rays three rays four rays will work in the same manner so no matter whatever the case is you will take only two rays which will be which will be sufficient for your image formation which will be sufficient to tell you about the position of an image but in this second case i'll let you know about the four rays four rules i'll apply on it not in the very first case first we'll do as ncrt or the reference books assign us to do but later on i'll play with this diagram or make it more messy it will be messy at the end but before that you'll get your answer so note till then and then i'll make that diagram very messy which will but let will let us know about will that messy thing will let us know about that even if you use three rays or four rays you will get the same answer so let's see this is concave mirror 
this is a principal axis here it's pole reflecting non reflecting surfaces are here this is focus this is center of curvature an object is beyond c so i'll make this object here beyond c now there is another thing if this is an object we need the complete image of an object but we will deal only with head we will deal only with head because i know wherever the head will be in the perpendicular direction on the principal axis there will be a tail and rest of the body of this object will be between tail and head so i'm sure about tail that tail will remain on principal axis the image tail is also on principal axis if we'll get head in this space in this complete space we will join that tail and head and we will get the image of the complete object so we are not worrying about the object particles we will deal only with head and tail in this case so let's first take two rays this is my first ray which is parallel to the principal axis a bit parallel to the principal axis as it's a free body diagram then after reflection it will pass through focus we know that if a ray comes parallel to the principal axis then after reflection it will pass through focus and if a ray passes through focus if a ray passes through focus then after reflection it will pass parallel to the principal axis then after reflection it will pass parallel to the principal axis this is the first reflected ray here this is the second reflected ray here these reflected ray meets here we are only here for reflected ray don't take this point as the image position as it is the interaction of interaction of the reflected ray of this and incident ray of this we are not here for incident ray and reflected ray interaction we are here for reflected rays so this is the point of interaction of the two reflected ray so image definitely will be here this is the position of the head this is the position of the head and this is the position of the tail i'm joining this rest of the image of the particles of the object is in between now what we got for image so image formed is a part between c and f between c and f b part that was the position next part which we want to know is nature of an image so nature of an image is real first of all it is real why because they are actually meeting the rays reflected rays actually meet to form an image real and you can clearly see that object is upside here and image is downside here therefore real and inverted well in maximum cases uh, every real image is an inverted image and every inverted image is real so they work together but this is not the 100% case it is 99.9% cases there are some questions there are some numericals in which this doesn't apply but yes till your standard in this standard you will you can uh, trust this that whenever the image is real it will be inverted now the third thing is size of an image we can clearly see that the object size is bigger and the image size is smaller so it will be diminished it is small not infinitely small what is infinitely highly diminished highly diminished was the prior case when there was no comparison between the size of the image with respect to size of object but here we can compare it it is small but not highly not infinitely small fine now this is your answer when object is beyond c but now i'm making this diagram a bit messy as i told you that if you will take if you will take more than if you will take more than two rays you will get the same answer so there are two rules which i have already used first is of parallel one second is of focus one if a ray passes parallel it reflects back and passes through focus and if a ray passes through focus it will reflect back and passes parallel to the principal axis now i am taking the third one that if a ray passes through a center of curvature let's see if a ray passes through a center of curvature like this it will retrace its path therefore it will come back to the same path and reflected ray will meet at the same point where the first two rays were meet this is the third ray and the rule number fourth as i told you i'm now i'm making this diagram more messy which is not the part of the solution which is not the part of your curriculum but i'm showing this only to tell you 
to trust that even if you'll take any other two rays you will get the image there only so if a ray strikes pole with some angle and if you'll try to make it the same angle after reflection it will make same angle according to law of reflection so reflected ray here's the incident ray here's the reflected ray Re reflected ray will pass from the same point again this was the reflected ray this is the reflected ray this is the reflected ray and this is the reflected ray you can see that all the reflected rays meet at this point only and for once they will never meet again now this is the reflected ray the extended reflected ray of this one this is the reflected ray the extended reflected ray of this one and this is the reflected ray extended reflected ray of parallel one and this is of course extended reflected ray of the center of curvature one you can clearly see from this that they are diverging now they are diverging now they will never meet again they meet only once and wherever they meet that is the position of an image i hope if you didn't get this then leave it stick to the two rays concept now this case four case third sorry case third so slowly you are taking the object nearer to the mirror first it was at infinity then you keep it beyond c now you will keep it more near to the mirror that is when object is at c when object is at c this is the tricky one because there are uh, boundations to the formation of the image in order to keep those boundations you need to definitely draw this diagram at least from the compass and scale at least even if you try to do it free boil diagram for the rest of them but for this to keep this intact whatever you need you'll get only if you'll use compass and scale so as the answer of the image formation will be very conditional or will be very compact answer which is hard to get from pre void diagram so this is c this is f this is center of curvature and principal focus now a center of curvature if an object is at c that means this is an object we need to worry about we need to worry only about head as i already told you that tail is on principal axis itself so if we'll get head we will join it with tail perpendicular to the principal axis and we'll get the image now there are two rays which we are talking about first is what a ray which passes parallel to the principal axis which incident parallel to the principal axis then after reflection it passes through focus now uh, if we we'll take a second ray which will first pass from focus incident the mirror at the focus so after reflection when you'll see it it will pass parallel to the principal axis which makes it to incident the first reflected ray here so this is the position of the head the image of the head and if you'll join it perpendicular to the principal axis you will get the tail and you can clearly see that both object and image is at c both object and image is at see that's why i was telling you to make it with compass or scale because without that it will it won't be that easy to make it symmetric to work it symmetrically so image formed is a part at center of curvature at center of curvature that is c that is c second part the image is real as any reflected ray when meet actually to give the image it is real image and we can see that object is upside image is downside therefore image is inverted image is inverted and last thing is if you can see this that of the ruling page they are using one line and half of the other line and here also of the ruling page they are using one line and half of the other line so you can say that image is of same size image is of same size that is why this case is very much difficult as it's need to be there only where the object is and it's need to be of the same size fine this is our case 3 let's move towards case 4 now 
case four. As I told you, this is a drill to take the object nearer and nearer again and again. So now this time, when object is is in between C and F, when object is in between C and F. Let's see. This is concave mirror, principal axis, focus, center of curvature, is our object between C and F. Now, if object is in between C and F, then head will again give, let's say, like, mm, generally head gives infinite rays, but we deal only with two rays, therefore, I'm taking the first ray which is parallel to the principal axis then after reflection they will reflect and passes through principal focus another ray which is passing from principal focus and falls on concave mirror then after reflection they need to be parallel to the principal axis so this is the first reflected ray this is second reflected ray they meet here which makes me to draw an image with the tail of the head here's our image so image formed image formed is a beyond center of curvature beyond center of curvature second it is real and inverted it is real and inverted third it is magnified it is magnified you can say magnified or you can even use the word enlarged both words means same that size of the image is bigger than the size of an object so magnified or enlarged you can see here that object is smaller and image is bigger now let's move more further that take the object more nearer to the mirror case fifth when object is at principal focus when object is at principal focus if you remember that in the beginning of this lecture i told you nature loves symmetry nature loves symmetry so case one was about when object is at infinity case one was about when object is at infinity image formed image we got on principal focus now object in case fifth object is at principal focus so you can guess where will image be image will be definitely at infinity right so if object was at infinity image was on focus now if object is at focus then image will be on infinity so this is again concave mirror with principal axis on it this is focus this is center of curvature we can draw an object like this head there are two rays one which falls parallel to the principal which falls parallel to the principal axis and after reflection passes through focus another if a ray passes through center of curvature it will retrace its path if a ray passes through center of curvature it will retrace its path so these are the two reflected rays which you can clearly see are parallel to each other are parallel to each other they will never meet only if one says that infinite rays meet at infinity so therefore that's our answer if image is formed image is formed a at infinity at infinity because parallel rays meets at infinity b part as it's actually meets at infinity so i'll take it as real image and invert it because i know that object is upside here and image wherever it is it has to be downside the principal focus therefore it is real and inverted and c part if you'll see a size of an object here's the size of an object which is this much 
and if you will guess where is the image what is the size of the image it will be very large with respect to object therefore we will use word highly here as i already told you highly means infinitely highly means infinitely and magnified or enlarged you can even use the word enlarged instead of magnified which means big infinitely big fine that is our case fifth now case now case sixth this last case left we have been too much close to the mirror now this is the last position when object is in between c and f when object is in between c and f now let me draw it downside somewhere as it's need to be extended somewhere else so let's get the space for it this is the non reflecting surface of the mirror this is focus center of curvature object is here there is a ray parallel to it then there is a reflected ray which passes from principal focus again there is a ray passing from center of curvature will retrace its path so it will go somewhere here and we can clearly see that these are the diverging rays they will never meet here so if something doesn't meet here so it doesn't meet actually it appears to meet appears to meet at the back side so if you extend this at the back side you will get the image so here you can say that the reflected ray the reflected ray are not actually meeting it they are appearing to meet at the back side so they are appearing to meet at back side therefore image formed is a behind the mirror the position of the image is behind mirror b it is not real image as it appears to meet reflected ray appears to meet that means it's a virtual image it is a virtual image and if object is upside and image is also upside it is erect it is erect C part, it is magnified. It is magnified. We can clearly see this. See this object is of this size and image is of this size. That means image is magnified. These were the six cases, and let me give you a short review of all those six cases. So. let's say there is a bigger mirror there is a principal axis on it you will see one by one everything again but this is something which is of your internal use which you can do in rough side to remember everything doesn't need to be there in your answer answer sheet anywhere so there are six cases one is one is when object is at infinity and of infinitely high size 
one is these dotted part is of infinity this dotted part here is for your infinite distance and this dotted part here is of infinite size this is the first position of an image which we have discussed in this case an object is at infinity this is your second position when object is of defined size at a defined position that is beyond c this is your third case when object is at c this is your fourth case when object is in between c and f this was your fifth case when object is in between is at f and your last sixth case is when object is in between pole and focus when object is in between pole and focus so for this very first diagram you can see that object will be at focus object will be at image will be at focus sorry for this when object is at infinity image is at focus with very small size you can see this in comparison to the infinitely high size of an object for the second case when object is beyond z when object is beyond z image will be in between c and f image will be much bigger than focus one but less than the object size image will be in between c and f but of smaller size of an object for the third case when object is at c image will be at c also and of same size image will be at c also and of same size when object moves between c and f between c and f that is fourth case when object is at is in between c and f that is fourth case image will be beyond c image will be beyond c and enlarged greater than the size of the object when object move further towards fifth case that is at f image also gets far away from the mirror and will reach to infinity will reach to infinity of highly magnified size highly magnified size this is the sixth case which is completely different from the first five as in first five cases you can clearly see this that image is real and inverted image is real and inverted but in sixth case image will be virtual and erect image will be virtual and erect and behind the mirror so for first six case you will clearly see this as object comes closer for first five case as object come closer to the mirror image goes beyond image goes beyond let me put these star marker point here as object comes closer image goes far as object comes closer image goes far p point second point that as object as object comes closer image increases its size image increases its size you can see this and next point you can also get an idea where the object if you have an idea about the object then you can get the idea of image by remembering this third point which is very important if object is sure is sure with its position with its position by saying by saying at by saying at you are also sure 
we are also sure about image we are also sure about image by saying at by saying at as they said image is at infinity we said as they said object is at infinity sorry as they said object is at infinity we said image is at focus image is at focus as they said in this case object is at center of curvature we also said that image is at center of curvature so this at thing is being sure where exactly object is where exactly image is in this case fifth case let's see they said object is at focus so we also said images at infinity that is the dealing with at now furthermore i'll write here on the top if they are not sure with beyond if they are not sure with beyond we are also not sure we are also not sure by saying by saying between by saying between and vice versa and vice versa so they said that object is beyond c they said that object is beyond c we said that image is between c and f now beyond c what is beyond c let's say focal length is 10 what is beyond c let's say focal length is 10 therefore center of curvature is 20 therefore center of curvature is 20 so if they'll say that object is beyond c that means beyond 20 cm what is beyond cm it can be 21 it can be 22 it can be 25 it can be anything but countable but countable so beyond 20 there are many numbers but they are not sure exactly where so they said beyond c so we also said that image is between images between c and f we are also not sure because between c and f there are many numbers 10 to 20 in between 10 to 20 there are 11 12 13 14 image can be anywhere now see here in fourth case when they said that object is between when they said that object is between c and f that means in between 10 to 20 object can be anywhere as they are not sure about object we are also not sure about image we say images beyond c images beyond c that is beyond 20 image can be anywhere if object is in between 10 to 20 anywhere then image is beyond 20 anywhere but countable now who will let us know about the exact position that will be mirror formula which will be completely different topic of the next class but till now you can learn these star marker points which will make your life easy in order to proceed with qbd fine now let's move towards concave mirror convex mirror sorry concave mirror is done with six cases there are only two cases for convex mirror rules are same rules are same now for convex mirror there are only two cases i told you this why let's see case 1 convex mirror rules are same that means if object cannot pass from focus but if tries to pass from focus it will reflect back parallelly if object comes parallelly it will appears to diverge from focus fine if it tries to pass from the center of curvature it will retrace its path you can clearly see this that i am always using try to pass try to pass why it is so because in this case center of curvature and focus are on the right sides center of curvature and focus are not real they are virtual this is also the question that is the focus principal focus or center of curvature of convex mirror real or virtual they are virtual and for concave mirror it is real so if they are virtual an object is on the left side that is of the reflecting surface side 
so what do you think will a ray when strikes on reflecting surface will it reflect from it or it will penetrate to goes from focus let's see so case one when object when object is at infinity case one when object is at infinity so when object is at infinity you know that it will send a parallel ray it will send a parallel ray to principal focus principal axis so if object source is at infinity they will send parallel rays parallel rays to principal axis and you know that any ray which you learned principal focus definition in the last class that any ray which falls on convex mirror parallelly to the principal axis then after reflection it appears to it appears to diverge from a point on the principal axis which is known as principal focus so they will diverge they will reflect back and diverge from the point on the principal axis you can see here that these two rays which are reflecting rays they are diverging to each other they will never meet so they will meet or they will appears to meet at the back side which is at focus which is at focus the very first case the very first case an object is at infinity image formed is first part at focus which is position of an image b part between sorry b part is your uh, nature of an image b part is your nature of an image nature is virtual as reflected rays doesn't meet actually they appears to meet so it is virtual and virtual and erect just like that if there is a image real real image then it has to be inverted if image is virtual it has to be erect and c part if object is at infinity that means object is of very bigger size object is of very bigger size whereas in comparison to that image is only of point size therefore image is highly diminished therefore image is highly diminished now i was saying that in this convex mirror there are only two cases there are only two cases why it is so in the case of concave mirror you had the reference points on the ref left hand side you had a reference point on the left hand side with whom you can relate that it is between beyond at but in this case there is nothing on left side everything is on right side so you have nothing to compare with you have nothing to relate with on the left side so there are only two cases which is left one a case where object is placed at that point which you are not aware of that is at infinity another a defined distance so case 2 is when object is at defined distance when object is at defined distance so let's see this is focus this is center of curvature this is an object a defined object distance which will send infinite rays but we are only here for two rays as we have discussed many times this is the very first ray which is parallel to the principal axis and after reflection it will appears to diverge from principal focus it gets away from principal focus direction and another ray which when tries to pass from principal focus you can clearly see that it can only try it can only try why it can only try as it cannot penetrate the mirror it is here to reflect it back by the mirror not to penetrate it so it cannot go there so it only tries to pass from the principal focus but if it tries to pass from the principal focus the incident ray tries to pass from the principal focus the reflected ray the very reflected ray 
gets parallel to the principal axis. This is the reflected ray of second ray and this is the reflected ray of first ray. This is reflected ray of second ray and this is reflected ray of first ray. These two rays are diverging that means they will never meet but they will appear to meet on the back side. This is the extended version of the parallel one. This is the extended version of the diverging ray from the focus one. They will meet here. So I will draw image here which is which makes image formed is a between p and f between p and f this is p b images virtual images virtual and erect and erect why you use word erect because object is also upside image is also upside object is also upside image is also upside and c part it is diminished it is diminished so if we'll compare the two cases of convex and concave you will find that convex is always virtual and erect convex is always virtual and erect there are two cases and both of them are virtual and erect and it is either highly diminished or diminished it is either highly diminished or diminished they can never be what of same size or enlarged so convex mirror can never form an image of same size or enlarged another thing which you can know is that concave mirror concave mirror always form real and what real and inverted image concave mirror always form real and inverted mirror inverted image it never forms virtual only in one case it forms virtual that is when object is placed between p and f when object is placed between p and f else it never forms virtual image and that too the virtual image formed by the concave mirror the virtual image formed by the concave mirror is magnified and enlarged so how will you make a difference that if a mirror if a mirror forms a virtual image if a mirror forms a virtual image is it concave is it concave is it convex is it convex or is it a plane mirror because both of all the three mirrors plane mirror concave mirror convex mirror all of them form virtual image but there is a difference plane mirror forms a virtual image plane mirror forms a virtual image of same size plane mirror forms a virtual image of same size i'm writing here plane mirror forms an image of same size virtual image of same size concave mirror forms a virtual image of magnified size concave mirror forms a virtual image of magnified size and convex mirror forms a virtual image of convex mirror forms a virtual image of either diminished either diminished or highly diminished but yes definitely diminished so these are the differences between the virtual image formed by plane mirror concave mirror and convex mirror they will even tell you that how you can tell about touching a mirror is it plane concave or convex if you touch a mirror and it is like it is straight it is plane then it is clearly a plane mirror if you touch a mirror and the surface of the mirror is bulging inwards bulging inwards it is concave mirror and it is bulging inward and if it's bulging outward it is convex mirror that is by touching and if you want touch if question doesn't allow you to touch the mirror and then also he ask you about the nature of the mirror then you can see your image in it if it's of same size virtual image of same size it is plain if it is of magnified size you find your self in the mirror of enlarged size you can say that it's concave and if your image in the mirror which is virtual is of diminished size that is smaller size than yourself then it is convex this is the difference between them now you are ready to do qbad to do qbad question based on above discussion that is on page number 76 which link you up with the concept of spherical mirrors 
the definitions which you have learned in the last class and the ray diagrams which you have did which you did in this class qbad page number 76 to 79 76 to 79 do update me with this homework and with your doubts fine